been some time since we've had a chat. I've been buried in travel. And then getting back and doing all the video editing. Uh, as a matter of fact, just to give you a clue, the uh, video editing to get those 10 videos up, it took me six days and I kept track. It was 112 hours I spent at the computer on the program uh, to edit those videos and get them uploaded. I'm tired. I'm tired of staring at the computer screen. So <clears throat> over the next few days I'm taking a little bit of a break, but I'm going to give you an update on uh, what's going on. Okay, first of all, uh, I'll address a few questions that I, I continue to get. There is no update yet on my medical status, although I'm told we may be close to an answer and uh, it's it's looking optimistic, but the truth is I have no idea. I don't think anybody has any idea. My particular situation in no way is addressed in the new law, so I don't think anybody knows how to answer it. Uh, that may work to my advantage. I, I don't know. The bottom line on that is if it's okay, then I stay. If it's not, then I'll be gone in September. I didn't move to another country to have Big Brother strong arm me into paying for something I don't need and I don't want. If I cared to have that sort of treatment, I could have stayed in the U.S. with Obamacare. You know, that's pretty much the way it is. Now, I'm not going to say that they're wrong. I, I, I do understand what it is they're trying to do and why they're trying to do it. And I understand that their IESS program as it currently stands, is a good program. I, I do feel that it's going bankrupt because they've been supporting it for the last few years based on loans. And to keep it going, they have to do something drastic. And this is only part of it. And to some people's, I think, misunderstanding, they think it's aimed at them as far as they're gringos. And so it's something aimed at them. And, it's not the case. It's aimed at trying to put money back into that program that's going bankrupt. And if they don't do something, it will go bankrupt. My situation has nothing to do with that. I'm not here milking their system. I'm not a, a drain on their system. I've done nothing but contribute to this country. Since I got here a couple of years ago, I put tens of thousands of dollars into this economy. It cost me $3,000 just to be able to be here as a resident. Uh, I realize some of that's wasted, but the government still got the money. So I'm not a drain on the economy. I wouldn't be a drain on the economy. I didn't come here to do that. But I'm not going to have that economy be a drain on me either. So we will see. I don't want to move. I'm happy here. I'm content here. I've said that over and over. But people are wondering, and I get emails almost daily asking me about it, in particular because of my trip to Colombia. But understand, I've been to Colombia. I had every intention of going back to visit. I had some health issues, and when I felt that I was really healthy enough to where I wouldn't have any problems, that I was going to go there, and that's what I did. And, and that was before this law even came up. Now when I did go, it became a dual purpose thing because, hey, if I do have to leave, then that's certainly one of my alternatives. That was number two on my list when, when, I, when I came in this direction anyway. So me visiting there wasn't any kind of a telltale sign or foreshadowing. It simply added another element to me going there, but that was always planned. Just like I have a trip planned to Uruguay, I've always wanted to go to Argentina, and so I'll be going there, I'll be going to Chile, uh, I've been to Peru, but those are all planned, and they have nothing to do with what the government of Ecuador does or doesn't do. I will point out to those that are concerned about what is going on in Ecuador, 
Ecuador is not the only place in the world. I mean, there's a lot of people here that think it is, but those people pretty much haven't traveled. They came here, they fell in love with the place, and they think it's the only option or opportunity in the world. That's simply not true. There's many reasons to fall in love with the place. I mean, like I said, I, I don't want to leave. I want to stay here. But there are amazing places in this world that will accept you with open arms, great places to live. Um, yes, Colombia is one of them, but there are many others. Uh, a lot of places I've been to before that I would be very happy and comfortable going back to. So it's not the end of the world. If, if Ecuador or any place that you live it gets to a point where you're just not comfortable with things that are going on, it's a big world out there. So go where you're comfortable. New Zealand's a great place this time of year from what I understand. There's no end of the world going on here. We're fortunate in that we have so many choices. Another question that's come up uh, an unusual number of times, a concern that I'm going to start blocking my videos. Um, based on one email that was telling me that several sources of videos speaking about Ecuador have gone to the Patreon accounts and because of that they're putting all their good content on the Patreon account so you have to pay for it and the videos they're doing now are just teasers. Well, I, I don't know about that. Yes, I did sign up on the Patreon account and yes, it is available if people want to do it, but as you see from these videos, it's rarely mentioned. I'm not hammering it home. Here's the thing, I don't begrudge, if that's what they're doing, I don't begrudge them of that because you go into doing these thinking, ah, it's just going to kill some time, it's a nice little hobby. But you find very quickly that there is a big need for this, and so that compels you to want to provide more and more and more information. But that's when you start to find out it actually costs money and it can actually get expensive. Now how that works, it, it, it doesn't really matter. Just understand that for those people that are doing that, I get it because it really starts hitting your pocketbook or your wallet at some point. And so they're simply trying to, you know, maybe they're trying to make money and God bless them, that's, you know, People in this world need money. I don't care where you're from. But I think that is initiated, at least it was in my case, because you find that you're, you're really spending a lot of money for other people's benefit, and so it doesn't hurt to ask to get some of that back. If it goes farther, I, that's, that's great. I have no qualms with them doing that, but I've said all along, I will not be taking these videos and taking the good content and, and putting it away to where you have to pay to get to it. I have a Patreon account. I'm into this going on $4,000 now since I began doing these videos. And if I can get something back on those, I'm not, I don't apologize for it. And if I don't, then that was my choice. But I'm not conditioning it on anything. If you feel inclined to help with this, that's great. If you don't, that's great. The videos are going to be coming out. Um, so the Patreon account is there, it exists for me, but all the videos, all the content are on YouTube, on my blog, on various websites, on Facebook, free of charge, and that's the way I have every intention of that remaining. And the last thing, um, I want to thank you for those who have been watching the Columbia series. I'm, I'm amazed at how much great feedback I'm getting on those. And as much work as it was, it was mostly fun to do. Um, and so I'm gratified by that. And as I travel more, uh, it's laying out a, a, road, a road map for me on how to best get that done. I do have, I mentioned in, in the last video that um, 
I have one more video to do. I actually have two more to do about Columbia before I wrap it up. But it'll be a part one and a part two. And it's because I feel, I don't like to have these videos run much more than seven minutes. I mean, sometimes they'll do the run up to 16 minutes maybe, but uh, I think seven minutes is a good length of time to watch. But if I have a topic that's 14, 15, 16 minutes, then there's a good chance, and if it's the same topic, then I'm going to try to break that up. The first part, it's going to examine what went wrong with these buses, and then I will explain how to take these buses if you want to go to Columbia or anywhere else. But I'll be very specific about leaving Cuenca and how to get to Columbia uh, so that you don't have to go through what I went through. Having four days to come back is absolutely absurd. But that's the way it can happen. And so I will tell you about that. And you can go and have a great time and kick back on a relatively comfortable bus and not have to deal with all the crap. And the second part, part B, will be the finishing touch on that series of Columbia. It will essentially be my observations and then a summary. During that video, I'll do a little bit of comparing between Ecuador and Colombia, but that's not necessarily fair and I won't go very deep into that. Uh, they're different in unique places in many ways, they're similar in other ways. It's kind of flip a coin, take your pick. And I mention that because I've been asked probably at least seven or eight times about what is my preference. I could live happily in either place and not look back. They are both wonderful places. There's a lot of things in Colombia that do not exist in Ecuador. But you can flip that coin and there's things about Ecuador, particularly Cuenca and in this area of the Andes, that do not exist in Colombia. And so that's what's going on, that's the current event. Um, I will be doing those videos sometime between now and Tuesday and be getting those up uploaded. I'll do them uh, as quick as I can, but honestly, I need a bit of a break. Thank you for following along. I really appreciate all the great comments, and I will see you in the next one. You know you could.